What exactly is reductionism? What is the process of reductionism that is different than uh, the, some of the physicists that you mentioned that are trying to think, trying to let go of the assumption of space-time, looking beyond? Isn't that still trying to come up with a simple model that explains this whole thing? Isn't it still reducing? It's a wonderful question because it really helps to clarify two different notions, which is scientific explanation on the one hand, and a particular kind of scientific explanation on the other, which is the reductionist. So the reductionist explanation is saying, I will start with, with things that are smaller in space-time and, and therefore more fundamental, and where the laws are more fundamental. Mm -hmm. So we go uh, to just smaller and smaller scales. Whereas with, in science more generally, we just say like when Einstein did the special theory of relativity, He's saying, let me have a couple of postulates. I will assume that the speed of light is universal for, for all um, observers uh, in uniform motion, um, and that the laws of physics so if you're for, for you know, uniform motion are, are those. That's not a reductionist. That, those are saying, grant me these assumptions. I can build this entire concept of space-time out of it. It's not a reductionist thing. You're not going to smaller and smaller scales of space you're, you're coming up with these deep, deep principles. Same thing with his theory of gravity, right? It's, it's the falling elevator idea, right? So this is not a reductionist kind of thing. It's, 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 it's something different. So, so simplification is a bigger thing than just reductionism. That, that, yeah, reductionism has been a particularly useful kind of scientific explanation, for example, in thermodynamics, right? Where the notion that we have of heat, some mi macroscopic thing like temperature and heat, it turns out that, you know, Boltzmann and others discovered, well, hey, you know, if we go to smaller and smaller scales, we find these things called molecules or atoms. And if we think of them as bouncing around and having some kind of um, energy, then um, what we call heat is, is, a, is really can be reduced to, to that. And, and so that's a particularly useful kind of um, reduction, is a useful kind of scientific explanation that works within a range of scales within space-time. But we know now precisely where that has to stop at 10 to the minus 33 centimeters and 10 to the minus 43 seconds. And I would be impressed if it was 10 to the minus 33 trillion centimeters. I'm not terribly impressed at 10 to the minus 33 centimeters. <laughs> I don't even know how to comprehend either of those numbers, frankly. <laughs> uh, do you, just a small aside, because I am a computer science person, I also find cellular automata beautiful. Yes. And uh, so you have somebody like uh, Stephen Wolfram, who recently has been very excitedly exploring um, a proposal for a data structure that could be uh, um, the numbers that would make you a little bit happier in terms of scale, because they're very, 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 very tiny. Um, so do you like this space of exploration, of really thinking, letting go of space-time, letting go of everything, and trying to think what kind of data structures could be underneath this whole mess? That's right. So if they're thinking about these as outside of space-time, then that's the, that's what we have to do. That's what our best theories are telling us. You now have to think outside of space-time. Now, of course, I should back up and say, we know that Einstein surpassed Newton, right? But that doesn't mean that there's not good work to do on Newton. There's all sorts of Newtonian physics that takes us to the moon and so forth, and there's lots of good problems that we want to do, solve with Newtonian physics. The same thing will be true of space-time. We'll, we'll still, it's not like we're gonna stop using space-time. We'll continue to do all sorts of good work there. But for, for those scientists who are really looking to go deeper, to actually find the next, you know, just like what Einstein did to Newton, what, what are we gonna do to Einstein? How do we get beyond Einstein and quantum theory to something deeper? Then we have to actually let go. And, and if we're gonna do like this uh, 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 automata kind of approach, it's, it's critical that it's not automata in space-time, it's automata prior to space-time from which we're going to show how space-time emerges. If you're doing automata within space-time, well, that might be a fun model, but it's not the radical new step that we need.